Hello everyone, my name is Fu Kang Liu. The title of this talk is Crypt Analysis of Word Low MC and Low MCN with Algebraic Techniques. This is a joint work with Takano Isobe and Willy Mayer. So what's Low MC? Low MC is a family of block ciphers proposed at EuroCrypt 2015. It is designed to be MPC and FHE friendly. The main feature of Low MC is that users can have flexible choices for the concrete instances of LoMC. Specifically, they can freely choose the affine layers, the key schedule function, and the number of S boxes per round. You can see the round function from this figure. Uh, specifically, it will first apply an S box layer where the number of S boxes is not fixed. So users can freely choose the number of S box Per round. Then the affine layer will be applied. Similarly, this layer is also not fixed, and the users can freely and it is randomly generated, so users can freely choose it. For the key after the affine layer, uh, the key addition will be applied, and uh, again the round key is generated by compute by multiplying the must the key with a randomly generated binary matrix. So the key schedule functions are also not fixed. The most important application of the low MC block cipher is the picnic signature scheme, which was proposed at ACM CCS 2017. Uh, the main feature, a feature of the picnic signature scheme is that its security relies on the security of the underlying block cipher low MC. Specifically, it should be difficult for the attacker to recover the key from a single plain test cipher test pair. Since the proposal of Picnic, uh, there have been several versions. In Picnic 2, low MC with 10 S boxes per round was adopted. Last year, Picnic 3 was proposed. And the four round low MC with a four S box layer was used in Picnic 3 as the underlying block cipher. Most importantly, Picnic 3 is an alternate third round candidate in East Post Quantum competition. And since the proposal of low MC, it has received several crypt analyses. The higher order differential attack and the optimized interpolation attack directly push the low MC to low MC v2. However, the difference in enumeration attack revealed some parameters in low MC v2 were also insecure. So, uh, low MC v3 were pro was proposed and, the, and uh, the number of secure runs was recomputed. To understand the security of low MC in the single plane test setting, the guess and the determine attack was proposed at 2 sec 2020. Uh, it can only reach two out of four rounds of uh, low MC with a four S box layer. And there is a parallel work published at EuroCrypt 2021. It is a polynomial based method to solve a system of high degree polynomial equations. This method can break a, a four round low MC with a four S box layer. However, uh, the attack requires a huge memory. So indeed, it cannot be faster than a pure brute force attack. As will be seen, uh, our attacks requires negligible memory and only two plain tests. Uh, so, our attacks are much more efficient than a pure brute force attack. Our attack is inspired from the difference enumeration attack proposed at 2 sec 2018. So let me briefly introduce uh, uh, the difference enumeration attack. It is indeed a mid in the middle attack. The attack procedure can be divided into three steps. Suppose our target is to attack R rounds of low MC. The first step is uh, for the first step uh, by exploiting the fact that only a few number of S boxes are applied per round, 
the attacker can choose an input difference such that there's no active Xbox in the first T0 rounds. Then, starting from the T0 round, he can enumerate the differences forwards for T rounds and store all reachable state differences. At step 3, uh, starting from the ciphertest side, he can enumerate the differences backwards for R minus T0 minus T1 rounds to match the stored reachable state differences. So just like this figure, just as shown in this figure. The attack uh, relies on an observation uh, that for the used 3-bit S box, the average number of output differences for a uniformly randomly chosen input difference is 3.62. Uh, so you can see from this figure that there must exist a valid differential trail. So the problem, so in the attack, it is constrained that there should be on average one valid differential trail left after the matching phase. And this will be exactly the correct differential trail. So for attacks on parameters NKMR with K equal to M using two plan tests, to uh to mount an attack with time complexity uh, uh, smaller than two to the k uh t and r and zero has to the uh, satisfy uh such requirements uh where n is the state size k is the key size m is the number of s boxes per round and r is the total number of rounds In spite from the uh, difference enumeration attack, we will use an extended attack framework. Uh, it can be uh, divided into three steps. In general, uh, the extended attack framework is the same with the original difference enumeration attack framework. As the first step, similarly, we compute a deterministic differential trail for the first R0 rounds. Then at step two, we will use many plan tests to find a pair of plan tests such that there's no active S box in the last R3 rounds. Uh, so you can see from this figure. Uh, after the second step, we now know that at the first R0 rounds and the, R, the, and the last R3 rounds, there will be no active S box. And at step three, the attack, we can enumerate the differences backwards for R2 runs. At step four, uh, we will compute the difference transitions for the middle R1 runs while solving equations. So at step four, we no longer uh, pre-compute the state differences in advance and store them. Instead, we will compute the, we will find a difference transition for the middle R1 rounds by solving equations. Uh, our attack relies on some properties of the 3-bit S-box. Uh, so the specification of the S-box is uh, shown here. So X0, X1, and X2 are the input, three, are the input bits, and 0, Z1, Z2 are the three output bits. The first observation is that for each valid non-zero difference transition, the inputs conforming to such a difference transition will form an affine space of dimension one. In addition, uh, the three output bits become linear in the three input bits. That the S box is freely linearized for a valid di non-zero difference transition. For example, uh, if the input difference is 0, 0, 1 and the output difference is 0, 0, 1, it can be derived that x0 must be 0 and x1 must be, uh, x0 must be 0 and x1 must be 0. So the expressions of the three output bits can be written as 0 equals to 0, uh, z0 equals to 0, z1 equals to 0, and z2 equals to x2. The second important observation is that for each non-zero input difference, 
its valid output differences from an affine space of dimension 2. This property also applies to the inverse of the S-box. Uh, observation 1, uh, so for observation 1, it also applies to the inverse of the S-box. Uh, for example, uh, if the input difference is 0, 1, 1, the corresponding output differences we are set to find delta z1 plus delta z2 equals to 1. When the output difference is 0, 1, 1, the corresponding valid input differences we are set to find delta x1 plus delta x2 equals to 1. So based on the second, uh, second observation, we can compute the middle R1 round difference transition uh, in this way uh, with the following three steps. Uh, at the first step, we can introduce some intermediate variables to represent the output difference of each S-box in the middle L rounds. So there will be M times 3L minus 1 intermediate variables. Then, uh, uh, so after step 3, uh, in the extended framework, the input state difference and the output state difference for the middle R rounds are already known. So, according to observation 2, uh, we can construct n minus 2m equations in these variables. And uh, at step 3, uh, we solve the system of equations and uh, get the solution of the variables. Then, according to the solution, the output difference of each S-box in the middle R1 runs is now. And we can easily check the validity of the difference transitions in each S box by uh, according to the differential distribution table. So to make R1 the largest, uh, we need to ensure that the number of variables should be smaller than the number of equations. To make the attack faster than the brute force attack, uh, we need to ensure that the time complexity to enumerate differences cannot exceed 2 to the k. So we have uh, two extra uh, constraints. To, to make the attack uh, reach as many rounds as possible, that's to make R1 plus R2 the largest, the time complexity to enumerate differences will be uh, uh, computed uh, will be computed as the maximum value of 2 to the 1.86 mr2 and 2 to the m times 1.86 r2 plus 3 r1 minus 2 minus m. And so the details of how to de derive such formulas can be uh, referred to our paper. So compared with the uh, original difference enumeration attack, uh, there are two advantages to use the new strategy to enumerate differences. The first is that the memory complexity is negligible since there is no need to store all possible reachable state differences anymore. Second, it allows many possible differential trails exist after the difference enumeration phase while only one valid differential trail is allowed to exist in the original attack in the original attack so we can extend the number of attacked rounds however this also naturally causes a problem that's how to find a correct differential trail among all the possible differential trails after difference enumeration next i will discuss our solution to this problem but in a, in a word uh, we will devise an algorithm to efficiently check uh, to efficiently retrieve a key from a random given differential trail. So note that in the extended attack framework, uh, for the last R3 rounds, there will be no active uh, S-box. So for the last R3 rounds, 
uh, to recover the key from a random given differential chair, we first introduce some intermediate variables to represent the input of each S box in these runs. There will be in total three MR3 variables. Then according to observation one, once an S box is active, the S box is freely linearized and there are two linear conditions on the three output bits. In supposing all the S boxes in the middle R1 plus R2 rounds are active, we can know that uh, from observation one, we can extract at most two M times R1 plus R2 linear equations in terms of the K bit key and the three M are three intermediate variables. If the number of equations is larger than the number of uh, variables, uh, we can expect only one solution to the equation system. And according to the solution uh, to the equation system, we can get the, uh, the key value and the key and the correctness of the key can be easily verified by using the plain test the cipher test pair. So in, indeed, we only need to use B runs uh, if B satisfies two times MB greater than K plus three MR three and B is smaller than R one plus R two. So in the above explanation, we only discuss the case where all the S boxes in the middle R1 uh, plus R2 runs are active. But it is possible to happen that there will be some inactive S boxes in these middle runs. So what will happen if this happens? Uh, one way is to uh, introduce some intermediate variables for uh, to, to represent the input bits of each S box, just as our way to proceed the last R3 rounds. However, this will not be uh, friendly to compute the time complexity uh, of our attack. So we instead choose to get two output bits to linearize an inactive S box. Then we can find an easy way to bound the time complexity to retrieve the key for a random differential chair. Uh, so it is given here. Uh, by apply, uh, so now we have now the time complexity to enumerate differences and the time complexity to retrieve the key For uh for uh for an arbitrary given parameter, uh n k m r, uh so so we can compute the no the maximum number of runs that can be attacked. So from this table, uh it can be found that we can break one instances one instance of low MC when the block size n is much larger than the key size k. This is uh, this, uh, this is indeed uh, this indeed benefits from our efficient way to enumerate differences. And from this table, uh, it can be found that we can uh, break several instances of low MCM, and uh, we can uh, crypt analysis. We and we can analyze much more runs than the proposed number of runs. At last, I will briefly describe our attack on the four round low MC with a four Xbox layer. Uh, the, the general idea is the same. That, uh, that's where we are enumerate the differences and uh, retrieve the key from a differential chair by, uh, with algebraic techniques. So uh, the attack procedure can be divided into four steps. First, uh, we, uh, we choose an output difference 
for the first round, delta 0s, so the output difference of the S-box layer in the first round, uh, we expect that delta s uh, zero s can uh, maximize the number of inactive S-boxes in the second round. Uh, based on some statistic knowledge, we can compute the expectation of the number of inactive S-boxes for in the second round. Then we choose an input difference delta zero such that delta zero can propagate to delta zero s. Then we choose two plan tests whose difference is delta zero and uh, encrypt them and uh, obtain the cipher test. According to the cipher tests, we can compute the uh, state difference that three s. Then at step three, uh, delta one is already known and uh, we enumerate differences from delta one to get delta two. For each delta two, uh, at step four, we will enumerate differences while solving equations to get all possible difference transitions from delta two to delta uh, three s. So, and uh, so by solving equations, we can always get, uh, we can get a possible a full round differential chair, then we use our algebraic techniques to retrieve the key from this differential chair and then check the validity of the key. With a similar way to bound the time complexity to retrieve the key and the time complexity to enumerate differences, uh, we find that the full round low MC with a full S box layer uh, all, uh, it's insecure. So you can see from this table that our attacks are much more efficient than the brute force attack. Uh, and they require negligible memory. In conclusion, uh, we devised some efficient attacks on low MC with only two chosen plan tests and a negligible memory. Parameters with two plan tests are required to be secure in the picnic security proof, and hence such attacks are meaningful. Second, it's not difficult to observe that our attacks much benefit from the uh, from some special properties of the three bit S box. However, these properties uh, has ne uh, have now been used before, and at the last making progress in the cryptanalysis of LOMC directly threatens the security of several instances of LOMCM, which is a backdoor construction built on LOMC and proposed in crypto 2020. That's all. Thank you.